The next item on the order paper is a motion on animal cruelty. The Business Committee has agreed to allow up to one hour and 30 minutes for this debate. One amendment has been selected and is published on the marshalled list. The amendment has been tabled by the proposers of the motion. The motion and the amendment will be proposed together and wound together, with 10 minutes to propose and 10 minutes to wind. Clark, please read the motion. That this Assembly notes with concern the number of cases of animal cruelty and the increasing risks with the online sale or transfer of animals welcomes the actions thus far to address issues raised in the interim report of the review of the implementation of the Welfare of Animals Act Northern Ireland 2011 and calls on the Minister of Justice to take further action to establish an accessible central register of those convicted of animal welfare offences or disqualified from keeping animals under the 2011 Act and to further protect animals from cruelty. I call Emma Little Pengelly to move the motion and the amendment. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I stand to propose this motion on the horrendous subject of animal cruelty. I know that there are many across this chamber and certainly across Northern Ireland where this is an issue very close to their heart. And it is an issue which makes me genuinely angry. You can see, I think, very clearly from the briefing pack that there has been much uh, consensus on this issue across this chamber previously and there's been many clear and agreed uh, motions uh, by previous mandates uh, in this assembly. And there have been some positive action and I wanted to acknowledge that and we want to acknowledge that within the motion. Uh, yet, despite of this, we bring this motion to this House today because of a genuine sense of frustration uh, and a genuine concern by so many uh, people out in Northern Ireland. And I know it was raised to me many, many times on the doors over the course of the last six months in terms of dismay and frustration. For the purposes of the motion, I want to focus on non-farmed animals, or as commonly referred to, domestic pets. Hundreds, uh, there are hundreds and thousands of uh, pet owners and animal lovers right across uh, Northern Ireland. And these pets give considerable love and happiness to very many homes. The relationship between an owner and a pet is one of love and trust. Pets give incredible joy. They love seemingly unconditionally and see past our flaws, perhaps when uh, no one else uh, is prepared to do so. I am unashamedly a pet lover. And I know from speaking to so many people on the doors that there are hundreds and thousands of, thousands of genuine pet lovers uh, and animal lovers right across Northern Ireland. And yet, all too frequently, we hear of shocking cases of abuse, cruelty and neglect. The abuse or deliberate injury to dogs, cats and other animals. The use and abuse of pet cats as bait or fighting fodder are cases of neglect and starvation. And the new opportunities of the 21st century, the internet and online marketplace, have brought increased dangers and risks in the transfer of ownership of animals. There is disappointment that despite all of the motions, and the very strongly worded motions, despite the moves to make amendments to legislation in terms of strengthening sentencing, that the point doesn't seem to be getting through. And I hear it on a weekly basis from constituents, dismayed at what they hear in terms of sentences and sentencing for some horrendous acts of animal cruelty. I have put forward, and we have put forward, an amendment to the motion. And although I know uh, there are concerns being raised, and there were concerns raised in terms of the review in relation to data protection and human rights issues in terms of an accessible register, this is still an interest, uh, this is a, a, an issue of considerable interest to people. Uh, in particular, uh, if a person is disqualified by owning, uh, by owning an animal, I think that people are dismayed that they can't actually access that information if they are going to sell an animal to someone. And I know there have been some improvements made in relation to it, but certainly that there is a, a, a strong interest in seeing uh, further accessibility and further information uh, on that, that issue. I firmly believe the issue of data protection can be overcome. And I wanted to provide the Minister with the opportunity, 
given that she is a new minister in the department, to look at the range of issues and hence the am amendment to the original motion and to bring forward further proposals, uh, particularly in light of the recent review as mentioned in the motion. I do welcome the action so far. I welcome the review and I think it's very clear from looking at the various responses in this chamber previously by all parties and a range of ministers, there is a genuine consensus to try to tackle this issue and yet there still is that frustration that we haven't been able to do that. My first act as the newly elected member for Belfast South was to go to the Bill's office and indicate my interest in putting forward a private member's bill in relation to animal cruelty. And that really has come about because it was such a key issue raised to me on the doors by so many people. And there is such genuine frustration uh, out there. You know, I have sat in my constituency office over the course of the last number of months and heard horrendous cases. I heard from a cat owner and uh, her cat had went missing. And she was able to unfortunately have to view uh, footage of her pet being thrown in to a cage, uh, two dogs and being ripped apart. And I think anybody who has ever owned an animal, owned a cat, owned a dog, you know their personalities, you know what they're like. That is absolutely heartbreaking and horrifying for any an animal owner. And you know, that is further then, uh, and the hurt I think is, is further, or furthered by the, the, what seems to be a weak sentencing to the perpetrators of this. And the attitude of some of the perpetrators afterwards where they show no remorse and they have not been uh, given any significant sentences. So it is uh, incredibly difficult, I think, to comprehend uh, some of the sentencing that is set down. And although as, a, as a, a barrister, I understand the very good arguments made very often against minimum sentencing, uh, I think in this case, uh, there have been genuine concerns raised that despite raising uh, the, the other end and allowing uh, judges to have the discretion to give more severe sentences, that doesn't seem to have had an impact in terms of the quantum right across. Animals, uh, in conclusion, animals give us so much as individuals, as families, but also as a society. They augment our lives. They provide so much love, kindness and joy. The abuse and misuse of this trust cruelty towards those so reliant on us as humans for food, for shelter and protection genuinely disgusts me. And I know it genuinely disgusts so many. It is clear from the doors that people want further action on this. They want to see those who abuse, neglect or cruel animals have a punishment that fits the crime. And I hope that this motion today before uh, this House will provide a new opportunity, fresh in this mandate, for us to join together to try to fight against and stamp out animal cruelty in Northern Ireland. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And I welcome the opportunity to speak on this uh, important debate uh, about animal cruelty and also to consider what further steps this Assembly can take to clamp down on those uh, who would inf inflict cruelty on defenceless animals. Uh, in essence, the debate today on a, a central register is about preventing crime uh, against these uh, defenceless animals. I'm sure everyone in this chamber would agree that crimes against vulnerable animals is abhorrent and should not be tolerated in our society. The Welfare of Animals Act of 2011 is the statute that introduced a duty of care in respect of protected animals. It allows for intervention and prosecution, as the previous Act had done, but it also provided new enforcement powers to allow action to be taken to protect animals from unnecessary suffering even before that suffering occurs. The legislation also provided courts with the power to make a deprivation and or disqualification order against an individual found guilty of committing an offence. And while there is no provision in legislation for a central register of those convicted of animal welfare offences, I know that the previous Justice Minister was looking at the feasibility of such a register. And I would ask the, the new Justice Minister uh, to take up the baton uh, and further explore 
what possibility there is of introducing such a register. The Department, I know, does maintain a register of persons banned by the courts from keeping animals. However, there are issues around the sharing of this information among, uh, among the enforcement bodies who are DERA, local councils and, and PSNI that would require the implementation of new procedures and protocols. And my understanding is that this would be relatively straightforward. Uh, more significantly, however, there, is, uh, there are more complex legal issues around the sharing of this conviction data with non-statutory bodies, such as animal charities or sanctuaries uh, that seek to provide new homes for animals. Uh, there are issues, as the previous speaker mentioned, relating to freedom of information and data protection, for example, that would need to be resolved satisfactorily before non-statutory bodies could have access to a central register of the type that we're discussing here today. And uh, uh, I, I appreciate the complexity of, of some of these issues, and I know there are uh, major difficulties around this, but the issue, as I alluded to at the outset, was about the prevention of crime, about the prevention of cruelty to animals. Uh, as it stands at the minute, someone who has been convicted of uh, animal cruelty can go into an animal sanctuary uh, and ask to take possession uh, of one of the animals and take it away, and perhaps inflict further cruelty on it, perhaps use it as bait in dog fighting or, or, or something of that nature. If there was a register, uh, the animal sanctuary could access that register and find out if this person had been convicted of animal cruelty. So, uh, I accept there are difficulties, however, I also believe that if there is a will to get over these obstacles, it can be done and that a register can be established. So, I support this motion. I call Doug Bede. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy um, Speaker, uh, and I thank the member for, for bringing this uh, motion forward. Um, uh, it's, it's an important motion, and, and I welcome uh, the debate. Um, it is a bit, and I, and I will agree, it is a bit like treading water, um, because in 2014 we had similar, which started off that this assembly notes with concern the number of cases of extreme animal cruelty. Here we are in 2016. This assembly notes with concern the number of cases of animal cruelty. Cruelty. That's not a criticism. That's just telling you that from 2014 to now, uh, we haven't progressed far enough. But of course, in 2014, we did progress. Um, we did um, get a review on the implementation of the Welfare of Animals Act, Northern Ireland 2011, uh, and that helped increase uh, the conviction for indictment, increased uh, to a maximum of five years with, a, with an unspecified fine, on summary conviction to a maximum of, of 12 months with, a, with a, a, I think it's a £20,000 um, fine. So there is lots of things that we can do to prevent cruelty to animals and deal with welfare. These include confiscation, disqualification, improvement notices, PSNI enforcement powers in relation to dog fighting, for, for example. So there's, there's, the legislation is there. Uh, and we've done well to get that legislation in place. And what it's all about now is implementing that legislation. Uh, and like the members who have already spoken, um, the Ulster Unionist Party uh, would, would, would absolutely be in favour of creating a central register for, uh, for those convicted of animal cruelty. And the Data Protection Act can only be an obstacle, but not an insurmountable obstacle, that we can't get past it to be able to implement this. It's just something we know about, something we work through, and I ask the, the, the Justice Minister to really put some effort into this so we're not standing here having the same debate in another two years. We also believe in the Ulster Unionist Party that there's other things we can do to help with our, our legislation. Regulated online advertisement of, of um, pets for sale, um, not self-regulated, uh, along with breeder registration to work in conjunction with each other. Improved welfare of slaughterhouses. Now, we talk a lot, and we see a lot on the televisions of fluffy animals, cats and dogs, and people talk about the cruelty. But the cruelty to some of our animals which go to slaughter is 
just as bad. We believe that every animal should be stunned before slaughter. Now, we're open to everybody's religious views and practices, but it is the most humane way to do it, and we think that we should ensure that all animals are indeed stunned. And although we have confidence in our slaughterhouses and the regulations are, I think to give public confidence, it would be important to have CCTVs uh, in these um, slaughterhouses where animals are kept and where animals are slaughtered. And of course, when we look at, a, at our, um, uh, our, our greyhound racing uh, and the regulations governing the greyhounds, I think there needs to be tightened up uh, as well to, to prevent cruelty to our animals. Um, and that would include a registration of the dog from birth to death and a database outlining all of its injuries in that lifetime. Um, so you can see, that, the, you can see that, that all of the legislation that we need to, to create a good animal welfare policy is actually there, but it's all about the messaging. How do we message this uh, and how do we deal with sentencing? Because although we've gone to a stage where we've increased the sentences for animal cruelty, we're not actually applying those sentences. Now, I don't want to see anybody languishing in jail, but sometimes you have to say that if you're going to do this, if you're going to continually do this, then you deserve to go to jail for what you do. And, and you know, I, I, I look at this from April of this year, um, a farmer, and I'll not mention the farmer, but he was a repeat offender um, of cruelty to his livestock. He had 153 of them taken off him. 18 of them had to be put down. Some of the animals lying dead in the sheds with other animals walking over the top of them. Some animals not been fed. Some animals not getting water. And he got five month prison sentence suspended for three years and banned for keeping animals for five years. That's just not enough as a repeat offender. Ask the so, member to bring his remarks to a close. Please. So I think it's really important um, that we do take action against these people, and I fully support the motion. Here I'm Sir Nicola Malm. I call Nicola Malm. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Um, I rise on behalf of the SDLP to speak in support of the motion and the amendment. I think it is fair to say that we are known as a society of animal lovers. Um, in most homes where there is a household pet, that pet is held in loving regard. Indeed, it is often regarded, as other members have said, as a member of the family. To most people, and I'm sure to each and every member in this House, cases of animal neglect, cruelty, mistreatment and abuse are truly abhorrent. The pain inflicted from the act of cruelty on the animal is sickening, and the insight that that act gives us to the perpetrator is disturbing and should set alarm bells ringing. Therefore, Mr Speaker, I am pleased to see that as a direct result of the 2011 Animal Welfare Act and the Justice Act 2016, there are now stricter and harsher punishments on those who have been convicted of animal cruelty. The 2011 Act introduced a duty of care in, res in respect of all protected animals and created an offence of failing to take reasonable steps to ensure that the welfare needs of that animal are met. Importantly, it specified that abandoning an animal is an offence whether the animal is likely to suffer or not. The Justice Act passed at the end of the last mandate amended the 2011 Welfare of Animals Act to ensure that those who are convicted have a harsher, more suitable sentence imposed on them. Among other things, it increased the maximum sentence for cases heard on indictment from two years to five years, and for summary cases involving unnecessary suffering and causing, attending, or other involvement in an animal fight, the maximum sentence increases from six months to 12 months, and the maximum fine from £5,000 to £20,000. Mr Deputy Speaker, there have been more than 4,000 animal welfare cases investigated by councils each year from 2012. I have personally spent time out joining our animal welfare officers in Belfast City Council as they have carried out investigations, and I want to pay tribute to their commitment, their compassion and their hard work. We must continue to support those who are working on the front line. 
We must continue to ensure that all allegations of the abuse of animal welfare are investigated fully and that those responsible are held to account. Between 2012 and 2014, there were 114 convictions for animal cruelty, 15 of which resulted in custodial sentences. It is vital that we, with the public, unite in our condemnation of those acts and fulfil our duty of care to the citizens and the animals in this jurisdiction. A range of members have indicated what they believe, actions that they believe the Minister should consider if we are to effectively deal with animal cruelty. But I think fundamentally we must take this opportunity to pledge our support for the animal-based welfare organisations that work tirelessly to eradicate animal cruelty. The SDLP shares the concern of the public about cruelty towards animals. The practice must be stopped and those responsible brought to justice. We are pleased to see this afternoon genuine support for animal welfare and we join with other parties in this House in supporting both the motion and the amendment. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I call Trevor Lunn. Uh, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. We, we also will support the motion and the amendment, although I must say I have, I have some reservations about the, the actual wording, but uh, the, the general thrust and the spirit of the motion is, is fine with us. Um, in terms of the, the Central Register, there, there are obviously difficulties there, as outlined by Mr. Sheehan during his contribution. Um, it's a question of data protection. There's a question of who has access to such a register. But at the end of the day, if, if I think um, if the Minister is capable of bringing forward something which allows the Department, the PSNI, statutory agencies, and charitable agencies involved in this work, to have access to previous records, well, that would be a good thing. And it would also be a good thing in terms of. Uh, yeah, go on. Uh, and I appreciate the member um, obviously supports the the, uh, the thrust of, of this motion. However, me member, given his, his latter comments, will appreciate also that I mean some of these agencies already hold personal information of people, and the only way, given I mean, if we listen to Doug Beatty's uh, uh, contribution to this debate, he talked about people who were repeat offenders. How else can we tackle repeat offenders unless those who carry out the licensing function have that information to know that people have been banned from keeping animals? Yeah, so thank, the thank, extra minute added. thank the member for that uh, uh, intervention. I, I don't disagree with him, but, but I'm just making the point that it's, it's a difficult area. It's not a simple thing just to establish a register, because the question is who would it be available to? As far as uh, I must say, Mr. Speaker, I, Deputy Speaker, I, I speak as a, a pet lover, just as Mrs. Pangeli did. I, I grew up with dogs when I got married. I lived with cats, choose my word carefully, for the last 40 years, and uh, also had the experience twice of owning a horse, which is not something I would recommend financially, but certainly was a very pleasant experience. Uh, the, the, the amendment. Um, talks about further and tougher criminal sanctions. Well, the, the other members have, have made the point that the, the Justice Bill in February this year did toughen up the sentences considerably. I mean, a, a five-year maximum sentence in, in, in UK terms for animal cruelty is, 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 is among the most severe, if not the most severe, in these islands. So, and the unnecessary suffering uh, section of the same bill which increased the, the six months up to 12 months and the fine from 5,000 to 20,000 pounds is also very severe. Now, I have a slight problem with where does unnecessary suffering end and animal cruelty begin, I must say, because I think, I think there must be some overlap there. But to me, the, the, the problem lies not, not with the legislation, not with the level of sentences, it lies with the courts. You know, and just as in many other areas of our legislation, the courts don't, don't avail of the, the facility that's available to them to really make a point when they're, when they're delivering sentences. I'm thinking here of a, a case in my own constituency a couple of years ago, a, a dog which was sprayed with an inflammable liquid and then set on fire. Now that, this was in the regime of a two-year maximum sentence for that. Uh, the, 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 the court awarded a sentence of 10 months. Now, frankly, how, how, how cruel do you have to be to get the maximum sentence for something like that? This dog was set on fire. 
had lived for a few days in agony and then had to be put down. The 10 months, in the normal way, was probably uh, subject to remission for good behaviour, maybe even a discount for remorse, I don't really know offhand. But this kind of thing makes a nonsense of the law. There was uh, the, the East Belfast case where somebody was um, uh, got a suspended sentence for keeping animals for fighting, and I think for kidnapping animals to groom them for fighting. Got a suspended sentence? What, what is going on? The, uh, I just heard about a horse case recently. A, 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 a father and a son, I believe, were, were actually disqualified for 25 years for, from keeping horses. They're now to be seen regularly at horse fairs with their sister who buys the horses. Now, this, is, this is outrageous. So the, I mean, I, I'll have to finish soon, but I think in terms of the central register, there must be some scope there. And also, the, the, this, this question of you only ban the individual from keeping an animal in these circumstances, but not the household, seems, seems to me to be completely off the wall these days. It, 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 it's such an obvious thing. That uh, if, if I was banned for animal cruelty, my wife could go out and buy a pet. You know, it, it just—it doesn't make any sense to me at all. I feel strongly with that, and I hope that whatever the minister has to say today, she will address those various points. It's—we're um, all animal lovers in this country, except for a small number of people who clearly are not, and it's those people we need to be dealing with, frankly. So I'll leave my remarks at that, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Thank you very much. I call Peter Weir. Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, I rise to support both the motion and the amendment. I think it is right that, that this House has taken a very strong view on animal cruelty issues. In the last mandate, it was raised a number of times, and to be fair to previously the, the DOJ, uh, Department of Justice, and also DART, I think there were issues which I think the whole House took seriously, I think departments took seriously as well. So it's important to think that we build on the good work that has been done, and I particularly congratulate uh, my colleagues on bringing this motion forward to show that we don't simply regard this, despite the good work, as being a, a done deal, that we should be constantly looking to see where we can actually improve things for the, the animal kingdom. Uh, and indeed, combat. Mention has been made, I think, that we are rightly a, a nation of, of animal lovers and pet lovers. Sadly, there is a small minority within uh, Northern Ireland who seem prepared, indeed sometimes take some level of perverse pleasure inflicting pain and cruelty on animals, which goes simply beyond any form of just simple neglect, but a very deliberate uh, level of, of cruelty. Uh, so it's important that really at the start of this mandate, there's a very clear marker put down that this is an issue which continues to exercise this, this House. As mentioned, which I think the, the motion indicates, there were a range of actions taken in the, the last Assembly. There was, I think, a very useful report that was produced in terms of the implementation of the Welfare of Animals Act, which was it is the most commonplace now to talk about the, the need for government departments to work together in a close fashion. I think there was good work done between DOJ and DARD in the last assembly in producing that. Uh, there was also, I think, for the first time ever, an opportunity to get all the stakeholders together whenever that report was launched, to have a, a session arising out of that, uh, which was very useful, particularly with the rehoming charities. And arising out of this, while well, there's been a number of recommendations that, that arose from the report, there was also practical action that was taken in terms of sentencing, which this House uh, endorsed, both in terms of the increase in the maximum sentence and also in the opportunity for sentences to be reviewed. However, uh, it's important that, first of all, that we're not complacent on the issue. Uh, and also, I think that, that while I think that this House has stepped up to the mark, as is indicated, there is also a clear signal which needs to be put out both to wider society in terms of respect for animals, but particularly, and I appreciate the uh, judges will guard their independence greatly, but while it's been clear that, that we've seen in recent years a number of custodial sentences have been handed out, it does seem to me that the, the message which is coming from across society to the judiciary hasn't always got through, and mention has been made, and members will, will bring up individual cases, where there, there are fairly horrendous cases of cruelty, which whenever, even in recent months, whenever they've been treated by the, the courts, have resulted in what I think most of us regard as relatively lenient uh, sentences. And I think there's got to be a clear message to judges that they've got to actually follow through on what the public mood is and indeed the, the public concern. There's also the case, 
that's been mentioned within this of what further actions can be taken. And there are a range of things, I mean, mentioned made by some speakers, for instance, on the specific issues of greyhounds will be, I think, something we need to actually have a bit of examination of the law. Um, but particularly as well of the increasing risk in terms of online sales, which obviously, again, is a developing field. We want to ensure that the proper regulations are, are put in place there. You know, I, I think it's a very good piece of advice that if someone is looking for a pet, they actually go to a rehoming charity. And we see the tremendous work that volunteers do there. And there is a concern that we make sure that there is that proper regulation. And we've seen that this is not something which is purely confined to Northern Ireland, but that we don't become a, a transit camp, both as recipients for uh, abused animals or indeed um, as some sort of flow through between different jurisdictions. So I think it's important that that issue is reviewed as well. On the issue of the central register, I think this is an issue which there needs to be a clear examination of. Mention has been made of the difficulties, and I think some of those can be overcome, but it, it does require a degree of thinking through and work particularly with rehoming charities. Uh, you know, it, it does seem to be a little bit in Congress that, that someone can commit these crimes, but we need to, and we need to ensure that there isn't then, that we, we aren't risking uh, an animal being given a pet, particularly being given uh, to someone who has been involved in this. I, I think um, Trevor Lund raises a very important point as well. And in a wider examination of what we do in terms of the, the data, uh, and I appreciate again their constraints in relation to this, I'll give away, yeah. I appreciate the members coming near the end of his time. However, it's, it's easy for us all to say things need to be done, but we need to be clear on what those actually are. I think there does need to be a robust members examination of this so that we, we have something that's fit for purpose. Mention has been made, I think, that, 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 for instance, if we're using a central register, that we have something that, that actually does what it says on the, the tin and actually prevents it. So, for instance, I think, as Mr. Lund, I think, has rightly made a point that we don't have a situation where there is a specific ban on an individual, where there is known that that, that individual cannot, um, for example, adopt a dog, uh, but then that they simply find a loophole around that, that they get a spouse, a son or a daughter, a friend to adopt that. Now, I appreciate that that will create great difficulties to how that is, that is in some way policed. But I think where we need to find, and, and I look forward to the Minister's remarks, a strong, uh, robust system, we need to give that degree of examination to ensure that, that what we do have is the best possible bit. And within the, the context of this, it is clear that a very clear signal yet again will go from this House that we will not tolerate animal cruelty within Northern That's Ireland. The draws and I think from that point of view, I look forward to that cross-party support to send that signal out to wider society as a whole. Here, Mr. Michaela Boyle. Call Michaela. Good, uh, um, Nash Cam Colia. Uh, first of all, I'd like to take the opportunity to apologise to the proposer of the motion for not being here at the start um, of this debate, um, and thank them for bringing this to the floor of the House today, speaking in support of the motion and the amendment. Um, this is an issue that I and others in my own area of West Rhone have been lobbied during the elections um, in terms of, uh, of animal uh, abuse and animal cruelty. Uh, I am aware that rescue shelters in West Tyrone, uh, like that in Grove Hill, for example, have expressed huge concerns uh, regarding breeding and pet abandonment, and that shelters are full uh, as a result of that, um, neutering schemes, um, and behavioural advice are necessary, um, and that's what um, some of these homes are saying in terms of education on breeds that are suitable for domestic pets. So that's just a, one area, you know, that they do have concerns. Um, uh, there is also a significant rise in Malamute and Husky breeds also, and, and that's been a concern for, for uh, rehoming shelters. And this is due to people not being aware of breed needs also, and uh, before acquiring a cute wee pup. So, um, in terms, and it's been spoke here before, on the trading of pets on sites such as Gumtree and Dundee and other social media sites, and I do believe, in my opinion, that there does need to be strict regulations, perhaps under the Trade Act and uh, maybe ta for tax reasons. Um, people that sell pets online uh, uh, rarely declare taxes, um, and this applies to larger animals like uh, horses through private sales uh, in the equine uh, area. Uh, in, in the equine world, DARD, or currently DERA, has recorded data um, on how many horses that are registered here. But uh, again, in my opinion, um, there are still many horses that aren't microchipped or passported. And uh, therefore, this would not be an accurate reflect, or a true reflection on the accurate figure that DARD has. Uh, unfortunately, it, it is, as others have said, extremely difficult to place 
uh, the sale of animals uh, online. Uh, so the importance of having an accessible central register for those convicted of animal welfare offences or, as the motion says, disqualified for keeping animals. Um, this should encourage and include, the, you know, in terms of the following, first and foremost, raising the seriousness of animal welfare and protection, and sound, good, key uh, education advice on that is necessary, uh, encouraging uh, responsible ownership, uh, and better access and regulations around puppy farms also. Um, this discouraging, I think, uh, one important area um, is discouraging the free-to-good home appeal. Um, I am aware um, that you know, people who have sought small domestic pets through the free-to-good home have used those uh, small pets in terms of uh, uh, baiting, and that, that's deplorable and despicable in my opinion, and that has happened. So the vetting, um, if, if there's going to be a register, there also needs to be a vetting process for those who are buying online. And, you know, as a means, uh, pet shops, again, uh, I have people who have came to me and said how easy they found it to go into a pet shop and buy a, a, a domestic pet or, or other, you know. So they need to have access to this register as well, um, pet shops. Um, purchasing pets uh, from a pet shop, I believe, pet shop owners should be able to do frequent spot checks on people's homes um, before they access um, uh, or purchase uh, an animal. So this motion is calling on the Justice Minister to introduce the Cruelty Register and indeed you know, I support that um, uh, and to ensure that those who are guilty of such offences are not able to adopt the animals. Uh, I have to welcome uh, the work done to date and it's been said what the Justice Department and DARD uh, have done in terms of joining forces and bringing, bringing forward uh, the, the implementation uh, review in, in February of this year um, and that, that also calls and gives out a warning and within the recommendations um, that we, you know, people should and must face tougher sentences and, and penalties under, that, under the law. Uh, both ministers at the time did launch the report of the review um, and, and, and as I say it has to be welcomed. 68 recommendations within that review um, aimed at enhancing communication and again it goes back to good key uh, education and, uh, and that needs to, to, to happen. Um, it is important also to highlight that in the Animal Welfare Party's the manifesto, um, uh, they have you know, sought that sociological evidence between uh, links between domestic violence and animal cruelty. And I think that's one area where we need to explore that healthcare workers and, and social workers need to be educated in this area to bring that information to the relative authorities. I support the motion and the amendment. Gormagat. Members, uh, the Business Committee has arranged to meet at 1 p.m. today. I propose, therefore, by leave of the Assembly to suspend the sitting until 2 p.m. The first item of business when we return will be question time. The sitting is, by leave, suspended. Members, we will now return to the debate on animal cruelty. And before I do that, I'd just like to wish the new Minister for Justice all the best. And I think it's always good to get through your first question time. So, well done. Um, I now call on uh, Christopher Stalford. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. I'm grateful. Um, Principal Deputy Speaker, concern about the welfare of animals is nothing new. In fact, we can be quite proud that in this part of the world, the first piece of animal welfare legislation was actually introduced in 1635. Throughout history, people have always been concerned with the welfare of animals. And this is because we recognize that we have a duty to them to protect them. And in the words of uh, Bernard Rollin, uh, a preeminent animal rights activist, he said that dominion does not entail or allow abuse any more than does the dominion of a parent over a child. And I think that's right. I think it's right that we have a moral obligation to protect animals from cruelty, from neglect, from ill treatment by others. And over recent times, there has been an increasing awareness of our obligations in this regard. All members will have been deeply horrified by the case of Cody, the dog, 
who was burned so cruelly by evil and wicked people. I know in my constituency, and I'm sure members from all the 18 constituencies can account to this, they have, been, they have had reported to them horrific instances of animal cruelty, whether it's of animals being starved or beaten or mistreated. And therefore, it impresses upon us the need to act. A deterrent is important, and that's why I welcome the measures that have been taken with regard to toughening up sentencing in this regard. But a deterrent can only go so far. I think what we are aiming for, I think what everyone would like to see, is societal attitudinal change as to how we treat animals. Education is important. That's why I'm pleased that in the, the DUP animal welfare policy, one of the uh, policies that we detailed during the election was the importance of responsible pet ownership uh, being taught in schools. And I think that is a good idea. I think resources being provided to young people, uh, to children, uh, educating them as to how they should look after the animals that they want to keep as pets is certainly something that I think we should look at in this assembly term. But also in terms of speaking to our own culture, speaking to our own attitudes, I believe that in this day and age, there is absolutely no place for circuses that use wild animals. And I think that would send the ending of that practice or the outlawing of that practice, and I'm glad the Justice Minister is still in her place, the outlawing of that practice, I think, would send a very powerful message as to the attitude of our society in that regard. A vigilant public is a watchful guardian against animal cruelty. And a recent Millward Brown uh, survey carried out uh, by the USPCA showed that very, very few people were actually aware of who they reported animal cruelty to. Who was the responsible authority for dealing with it? In uh, a previous guise, I served in Belfast City Council for 11 years, along with the member for North Belfast, and I'm glad that uh, in the council uh, we supported and pushed through uh, a proposal, a simple measure that only cost, I think, £10,000, the provision of a sticker to go on every ratepayer's bin in the city advertising the telephone number that people can call if they suspect animal cruelty or neglect. In that simple way, that small step that didn't cost a lot, we are aiming, or we aimed, to try and increase public awareness as to how to report uh, cruelty to animals. This motion refers to a register. I absolutely support the register. And I think um, ultimately, concerns have been expressed about data protection and what have you. Ultimately, I believe if someone takes upon themselves to torture or mutilate or starve an animal, then frankly, uh, whatever considerations there may be about protecting their data, um, I think the balance of the law should not be on their side. Uh, and we certainly should not allow a situation to exist. Can the member bring his marks to a, I will. Remarks to a close? We certainly case. should not allow a situation to exist where such people should ever have access to animals again. Thank I you. call Harold McKee. Thank you, Madam Deputy Principal Speaker. Uh, this is a very important uh, debate today and motion here. Everyone in this chamber will be appalled at the thought of animals being neglected or harmed. Indeed, coming from a farming background, I know my duty was not only to raise animals, but raise them within certain standards to ensure that all animals have a reasonable quality of life. In fact, Northern Ireland farmers produce food to animal welfare standards that are amongst the highest in the world. The vast majority of local farms here are responsibly run, recognizing the huge importance of good animal welfare and husbandry. Unfortunately, however, there are people in society who think it is acceptable to inflict suffering on what are most often totally harmless animals, whether pets, wildlife, or agriculture. Animal welfare is an issue which has already been receiving 
a higher profile over recent times. As a country of supposed animal lovers, our local papers and news bulletins include mentions of animal abuses all too often. Whilst there are well-known cases such as Cody, there are many, many more that simply go unreported. Some people are caught and are punished. However, the reality is many others get away with it completely. Not only have too many people been getting away with it, however, but even those who are caught have been getting away too lightly. The 2011 Act was a major step in the right direction, but its implementation was pretty poor. The best way to deter people from animal cruelty is to convince them that the risk of being caught and the subsequent sentences are so strong that it simply isn't worth it. Unfortunately, however, while the Act gave us the powers, it wasn't followed by the punishments. In 2010, the year before the new Act, there were just four custodial sentences, but by 2013, this had fallen to just a measly two. What a mockery of the law. It was when the infamous case in East Belfast saw four men convicted in relation to one of the worst ever cases of animal cruelty here, joking, laughing, and taunting the police as they walked free from court. That was probably the clearest example in recent times that we still had not got the balance right and that the punishments were not fitting. I thank the member for giving me on that particular point. But will the member agree with me that what actually made it worse was the sentence that was handed down by the judiciary in that particular case? And how, I mean, you do rightly describe it as one of the cases, worst cases of animal welfare, but how the judges actually dealt with that case and the lenient sentence actually was more shameful nearly than the crime itself. And the member has an extra minute. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Yes, a very good point. That was probably the clearest example in recent times that we still had not got the balance right and that the punishments were not fitting the crimes. I therefore very much welcome the new power that the Public Prosecution Service now has to refer on duly lenient animal cruelty sentences to the Court of Appeal. For the time being, we believe the PPS is the best safeguard to ensure the people convicted of this awful crime face the full consequences. I am very happy to support the call on today's motion for a central, central register. In fact, it was one of the key policy priorities in the animal welfare paper we produced earlier this year. There is a strong case to improve the information currently collated and stored regarding those found guilty of inflicting suffering on animals. It is essential that our enforcement bodies, including the PSNI and the local councils, are able to quickly access and share the conviction data among themselves and the wider public. In addition, collecting this conviction data could assist local animal welfare charities to more confidentiality, make decisions on who are suitable owners. In addition to a register, however, there are other key steps needed. The scourge of puppy farming and the accompanying upsurge in the online sale of pets is presenting our authority with major challenges. It remains effectively unregulated and there are some people making an awful lot of money from animal suffering, so I would hope the new department is actively considering ways to tighten the sale of pets in this way. And finally, Madam Deputy Principal Speaker, I would just make that point that animals involved in the provision of entertainment must be treated with the same level of care and compassion as that we would expect for our pets. I fully support the motion. Dear Sir Oliver McMullen, I call Oliver McMullen. Mr. Michael P. Gaskin, can I first of all congratulate the Justice Minister on her first day at the podium? Animal cruelty, members, is one of the most difficult sections of the Welfare of the Animal Act that we as legislators have to deal with. No matter how many laws and fines we impose, there are always those in our communities and in our societies who continue to inflict pain and suffering on defenseless animals. We must now look at other deterrents in the continuing fight against animal cruelty. And listen to today's motion, which calls for a central register for those convicted of animal welfare issues or have been disqualified for keeping farm or non-farmed non animals. And today's debate, I listened with, uh, with great interest, 
and there's very little talk of farm reared, reared animals. They're all under the Welfare of Animals Act, and I, I, I'm surprised that the, that has been left out so much today. In the last mandate, the then Agriculture Minister, Michelle O'Neill, called on the Justice Minister to look at how a register could be set up. And I know there is problems with data protection and that there, and listen with interest to what the Minister has to say. I myself in favour of a, uh, would be in favour of a register, but we must see the courts do their job. And as all the members here have alluded to today, it is no good having laws from the courts only to give offenders a slap on the wrist. And I agree with the member when we see people coming out of the courts laughing and joking, I don't think the deterrent is there. As I said, these registers also apply to farm reared animals, where cruelty does happen, but thankfully not on the same scale as non farmed animals. Guard veterinary inspectors, when required, can carry out very rigorous ongoing programs of farm animals welfare inspections. These inspections are part of the statutory cross compliance surveillance to access whether on farm uh, welfare meets the standards laid down in the legislation. In other words, members, if the farmer is not adhering to his cross compliance regulations, he can be fined twice. He can, first of all, be fined by the department. He can uh, face a heavy fine to come out of his single farm payment. And then when that was done, he can also be fined at a later date through the courts. So that deterrent is not getting out publicly either. He can hit, be hit with two fines. He also, this can be carried out from, uh, by public information or from information produced by other vets in the meat plants. So when a, when a vet inspects the carcass in the meat plant, he can see that there are signs of cruelty there on the carcass. That there can go back and the farmer then can be, can be taken in for cruelty even when the animal is dead. Also, some dog breeders who carry out the, the practice of online sale and delivery. Now, this causes animals great stress and pain. And this is an area I would ask the, uh, ask the, uh, the Minister to look at because we have the Welfare of Animals Act here. And we have in every schedule here every animal you can think of, right from chickens right down to goats, calves, right down to pigs, cattle, but nothing in there for pups. For, the, for the, 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 the breeding establishments, the, the uh, conditions that they have to adhere to, the size of cages, etc., the size of whelping cages, is not in this. Now, I, I asked some of the councils to send me on their information on the data that they carry for that there, and really it's like a primary one uh, a, a piece of paper that you would see a child filling in a school. There's nothing about the size of cages. And we've seen this in the, in the, in the television, pups, uh, uh, dogs and crammed into cages. These members with the law must, uh, the law must really crack down on these unscrupulous dealers or owners. And this is where the public, before they can make a purchase, can inquire if this animal comes from a reputable dealer or not. We must do all in our power to protect both farm and non-farmed animals from those in society who take great delight in inflicting pain and distress in defence of animals. And can I take this opportunity before I finish and ask the Minister to look at the ban on hunting trophies. That's these trophies that these people who go out to, to Europe or go out to Africa shoot defences, giraffes uh, and animals they got there and then get trophies to take back home. We have the power here to ban the import of hunting the trophies. To a close. And I would ask the Minister to look at that there. I call Carla Lockhart. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Principal Speaker. And I rise uh, this afternoon to support my colleagues who have tabled this motion. We all know uh, the preciousness of animals in our society, whether they are kept as a pet or uh, for livelihood. As someone who has been brought up on a farm and lives on a farm, I know all too well uh, the value that animals can and do bring to society. And there's no doubt in both cases, whether it is for livelihood or as pets, that there should be an aim and a common purpose that the health and well-being of the animal is, is key uh, in terms of the, the owners. 
Uh, so often we do hear of the high profile cases and I know they have been mentioned uh, throughout the House uh, today. Uh, but also I think we have to be mindful of the activity that goes on underground and the, the high level of cases that never really make it to the media. And I think uh, that we have got to engage ourselves in very much awareness raising uh, and, and education around, uh, around reporting of animal cruelty. Uh, the member uh, from South Belfast, Christopher Stalford, mentioned the initiative that he brought forward in Belfast City Council, and I believe he has to be commended for that. And I believe, um, as, as a government, we should be striving to ensure that initiatives like that are rolled out in all of the council areas. Since the implementation of the, the Animal Welfare Act uh, in 2011, I do believe it has given more teeth to our, our councils and to those dealing with animal cruelty. For instance, uh, in the last year within the ABC Council area, I think it's important to note that 583 cases were investigated, 972 visits as a result, nine cases of seizure and seven prosecutions. So the issue around um, uh, the implementation of the, of the Act, I believe, is starting to, to bear fruits, and I do think that we are starting to see progress in that. But that also then links to this central database that we as, as a party want to see implemented. Those seven people who have offended and have been prosecuted, I do believe should be listed and should not be allowed to, to keep animals in the future. I spoke with the local authority uh, just uh, earlier today and I asked them about this very uh, situation and they said when they are licensing dogs, for instance, um, they, they do ask the question if anyone has been disqualified, but the situation is that there is nowhere that they can actually check up on this information. So there is no central point for the local authority to go to and say, is this uh, information correct? So I believe that a central database would definitely go some way in ensuring that those who have offended do not and will not keep animals again. The 2011 Act also gives power to the magistrates and judge to imprison for up to five years uh, in conviction of a uh, cruelty offence and I would encourage the Minister uh, today to ensure the judiciary are minded in this way when dealing with these offences in court because nothing deters this type of activity uh, and uh, I, I don't agree with just a slight slap on the wrist. I believe they should, uh, should have appropriate sentencing and appropriate fining. I welcome that the legislation covers the sale of animals to a person who may be engaged in using the animals for cruel or so-called sports. Uh, I would, however, uh, believe that there still remains a disjoint between our enforcement bodies and would call for greater collaboration with shared intelligent, intelligence and proactive operations to find these people and to bring them before the courts. Yes. I thank the member for giving way, and she mentioned so-called sports. Would she agree that we need to remove the uh, exemption in the Animal Welfare Act that exempts hunting from the protection of animals against unnecessary cruelty? And the member has an extra minute. Thank you. Well, I think um, certainly that has been under debate, and I would imagine that it will be before this House uh, in the future. Um, going back to really the issue at hand um, and around the the implementation of a central uh, database. I believe that is a step that we can take, and certainly I, I'm not opposed to, to looking at, at all of this in the round uh, going forward. I believe we as elected representatives have a duty of care as much as reasonable uh, owners do. Uh, our duty is to legislate on this particular matter and allow the courts to deal with it uh, when the offenders have been uh, brought, brought before them. Uh, I think of my own constituency and I welcome the fact that in Banbridge, for instance, we have a, a very successful dog sanctuary where they take in uh, dogs that have been um, obviously left side of the road or, or dumped uh, in places and I think it's very sad that, that that charity has to rely solely 
on donations. And I believe that we as an assembly should be looking at the better financing, financing of these uh, charities who help in this regard. So I support uh, the motion today and trust that the Minister will take on board these issues. I call George Robinson. Thank you, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. In a previous debate, I mentioned how the internet can be a positive tool for local businesses to, to develop. Uh, this animal welfare debate flips the coin, and we see there is on occasions a darker side to the internet. Sadly, this includes the selling, giving away, or transfer of animals. My concern is to ensure that vulnerable animals are treated in the correct and duty of care manner towards all our animals, including our family pets. Uh, I would also commend the various animal cruelty organizations for the sterling work that they do. The report highlights issues of concerns that I would like to raise. One, how is this socialization of a puppy sold online monitored and quantified before sale? Two, are there any plans to have online animal sale points specifically registered so additional welfare checks can be carried out? Three, are there any proposals in development to lay out minimum staffing levels at breeding kennels? Four, what action is being planned to increase sanctions for licensed dog breeders who break the law and cause suffering? These are import important points that I would appreciate the Minister addressing. And at this stage of my contribution, I would wish the Minister well in her new post. <coughs> I would also appreciate if the Minister could outline what steps have been taken to establish the accessibility central register mentioned in the motion. I believe all of us want to ensure animal welfare of the highest standard to particularly protect pet animals and to avoid unnecessary suffering or cruelty to all animals. Uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, I support the motion. I call Chris Little and Chris uh, has four minutes. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. I'm uh, delighted to be speaking in support of animal welfare and against animal cruelty and support the principle of this motion uh, that this assembly does indeed say no to animal cruelty and that we will legislate zero tolerance uh, of animal cruelty. Uh, I, of course, uh, experienced close hand the heinous uh, case of animal cruelty in my own constituency of East Belfast, uh, where we saw uh, pets loved animals being stolen from people's homes uh, and used as bait for, to train uh, fighting dogs. Um, people were brought to the courts and uh, there was public outrage at the leniency of the sentencing that was applied in that particular case. I'm proud therefore that an Alliance Justice Minister, uh, David Ford, took action uh, to ensure that there was an increase to the maximum sentencing available uh, for animal cruelty in Northern Ireland, increased to a maximum of five years, uh, placing it amongst the toughest sentences in these islands uh, through the Justice Act 2016. I'm, I know that the amendment to the motion mentions further and tougher criminal sanctions. I'm unsure uh, how specifically the DUP proposed that this should be enhanced, but perhaps they will allude to that in the, the summing up of the motion. Um, as Organisations like Northern Ireland say no to animal cruelty uh, and League Against Cruel Sports have said one of the key ongoing problems, however, is ensure, ensuring that those maximum sentences are administered and enforced by the courts. I was proud to be part of a public rally on the 14th of May this year where almost 1,000 people turned out in support of the call for tougher sentencing uh, in relation to cases of animal cruelty. Uh, the Attorney General has stated that he feels the sentences do act as a deterrent, yet the high number of cases that we've seen uh, of this year do beg to differ in that regard. The motion also mentions a, a central register. I know that the uh, Alliance Justice Minister previously actively scoped the feasibility of an animal cruelty register, and I, I look forward to hearing uh, from the new Justice Minister uh, with regards to how that could be uh, progressed. I understand that there are problems with regards to which agency may oversee banned offenders uh, and checks that they're not in contact with animals uh, and also some human rights legislation make it difficult to extend bans to full addresses 
to ensure that anyone who lives uh, in that address uh, who has been banned can't still own an animal. Uh, so it will be hard to deliver that enforcement. Uh, members have mentioned the issue of online sales and puppy farming remains a huge problem uh, for our society which perhaps should be debated uh, in its own right. Uh, there are recommendations in the review of the implementation of the Welfare of Animals Act which pertain to the Minister for Agriculture, DUP Minister for Agriculture, uh, with regards to ensuring that that particular issue can be addressed more robustly. In particular, uh, as uh, the member for South Belfast, Christopher Stalford, raised to raise awareness uh, of to whom people should report animal cruelty. There is a recommendation for a public website and an awareness campaign, and hopefully that is something the DUP Minister for Agriculture can take action on. Other members have alluded to wider animal cruelty concerns in our society, uh, on, such as the need for a ban on hunting, the need for a ban on the use of snares, and the ban on the use of wild animals in circuses. Again, it's my understanding that they are can actions the that the DUP, the Minister for Agriculture, can take, and we certainly hope to see those brought before this House. Thank you. I call the Minister for Justice, Claire Sugden. Uh, thank you, Madam Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, I, I thank the proposers of this motion, which raises a really an important issue of animal welfare. For me, it really is so positive that we are debating this motion early into the mandate because as I, I have no doubt that each one of us, when on the doorsteps, have um, heard the concerns from our constituents about animal welfare during uh, the election. And I thank uh, Mrs. Little Pengelly and Trevor Clark for bringing it forward uh, the, today. The motion and the debate have both acknowledged the work already underway as a result of the review of the implementation of the Welfare of Animals Act Northern Ireland 2011. This review was carried out by the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, supported by the Department of Justice. The motion also touches on the challenges faced in tackling the scourge of animal cruelty in our society, particularly given the impact that technology has on, had on, on sale and transfer of animals. Public opinion is strong on the need for us to protect animals, to promote welfare and to bring to justice those who inflict harm and suffering. We have heard from a wide range of concerns today about both the farmed and domestic animal sectors, about online selling, about access to data, the inappropriate criminal justice response to cruelty and on the need to educate for more and promote animal welfare. Before turning to the detail, I want to give a commitment now. And I will write to my executive colleague, the, the DARA Minister, to bring the detail of today's debate to her detention and to seek a conversation about whether there is more to do to ensure the arrangements for protecting animals are as robust as possible. Like all of today's speaker, I'm an animal lover, unashamedly, uh, like Mrs. Uh, Little Pengelly. I grew up with pets in my family home. Um, and I have absolute, absolutely no understanding what actually motivates people to commit such abhorrent crimes. While it is worth noting that my department has a specific role in animal welfare, I am keen to explore this with my executive colleague. This motion calls for further consideration of tougher criminal sanctions and the, the establishment of an accessible central register of those convicted of animal welfare offences and those disqualified from keeping animals. Several members noted the joint review and Mr Beatty referred to the progress being made. Mr Shane stressed the need to prevent crimes against animals. For instance, tougher sentences have been legislated for and will commence on the 1st of August this year, as alluded to by Mr Little. I also welcome the fact that DARA and local councils have put a proposal to the Judicial Studies Board offering a briefing on animal welfare issues, and this proposal is being currently considered. During the, re the review, those calling for a central register or, or alternative system for sharing conviction data argued that it would assist in enforcement of the 2011 Act. Mr Weir referred to the need for robust systems, perhaps more generally, and this is something I would like to discuss with my DARA colleague. Under the 2011 Act, the statutory uh, duties for enforcement fall into three bodies. DARA in respect of cases involving farmed animals, local councils for cases involving non-farmed animals, and the Police Service of Northern Ireland for cases involving wild animals or more serious animal welfare offences, including those involving other forms of criminality. My department's involvement relates to the general policy around disclosing information on criminal convictions. It may be helpful for the record if we note the detail of the new sentencing arrangements, some of which Ms. Mallon touched on. As many of you will remember, in March 2014, the Assembly called for the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development in conjunction with the Department of Justice to review the implementation of the 2011 Act, particularly sentencing guidelines and practices, in order to ensure a maximum effectiveness to be brought to bear to combat animal welfare crime. 
Although sentencing was a key issue for the review to consider, engagement with key stakeholders identified a number of other important areas where animal welf welfare arrangements should be examined to see what any, if improvements, could be made. These areas included the arrangements for how the 2011 Act was enforced, how the various enfor enforcement bodies worked together, and how best to serve the public. The review published its interim report in February 2015, setting out emerging findings and recommendations. Responses to the public consultation which followed indicated broad support for many of these recommendations and also highlighted some additional matters for the review to consider. Dog breeding in particular was an area that attracted significant interest. The issue of sentences for animal cruelty offensive, which is the main aspect of the review relevant to my department, was considered in detail. While sentencing in individual cases is a matter for the independent judiciary, who must take account of the relevant facts and circumstances of any case, the role of my department is to ensure that a suitable legal framework exists which provides courts and appropriate powers to deal with all cases of animal cruelty. This includes ensuring that the maximum penalties available to courts, uh, to courts are appropriate. I do, however, appreciate that members of the public will be frustrated when they hear about, lawful, uh, about awful acts of animal cruelty and they will rightly want to see appropriate sentences being handed down. One of the key recommendations from my department arising out of the interim report was that maximum penalties should be increased. In examining the matter, the review considered a number of factors, such as the penalties available in other neighbouring jurisdictions for animal welfare crime, and also considered the sentencing framework more generally to determine what appropriate sentencing powers should be. The 2011 Act already provided Northern Ireland with the highest maximum penalties in the UK and provided for the most serious cases in Northern Ireland to be prosecuted in the Crown Court with a maximum penalty of two years. In the rest of the UK, UK animal welfare offences are summary-only summary offences. The review also recognised, however, that since the introduction of the 2011 Act, the Republic of Ireland has introduced new animal welfare laws carrying a maximum penalty of five years. While it, it was clear that the maximum penalties in the 2011 are, Act are strong, a combination of factors, including the serious nature of some of the uh, most recent animal cruelty cases, resulted in the review recommending a further increase. This recommendation was warmly welcomed in the consultation which followed the interim report, so much so that the former Justice Minister and Agricultural Minister accepted the recommendation at that point and agreed that it should be implemented as soon as possible. The necessary legislative provision was included in the Justice Act Northern Ireland 2016, again alluded to by Mr Little, and debated by this Assembly early this year, which many of you may remember. My officials are currently preparing an order to commence a number of provisions in the 2016 Act, including higher penalties for animal welfare offences, which it has been agreed with the Department will come into effect on 1 August 2016. In relation to increasing the maximum penalties, I would like to highlight some of the key changes. For cases heard in the Crown Court, the Justice Act Northern Ireland 2016 will increase the maximum sentence from two years to five years. In the Magistrates' Courts, the maximum sentence for more serious offences has increased from six months to 12 months. The 2016 Act also changes the mode of trial for certain animal welfare offences to allow prosecution of the most serious cases in the Crown Court where new higher maximum penalties will apply. These offences include breach of a disqualification order, which the review considered as part of its wider approach to preventing those disqualified from obtaining an animal. Until that point, it was only possible to prosecute these cases in the magistrates' courts. These changes provide Northern Ireland with amongst the toughest maximum penalties for animal cruelty of any jurisdiction on these islands. Alongside increasing the maximum penalty, penalties, my department has extended the range of offences captured by the unduly lenient, lenient uh, uh, sentences scheme to include certain animal welfare offences. These changes, which have recently come into effect, allow the Director of Public Pro Prosecutions to refer county court cases involving unnecessary suffering and causing, attending or other involvement in an animal fight, to the Court of Appeal if he believes the sentence handed down is unduly lenient. Together, I believe these measures significantly enhance the law around animal cruelty. If I could turn now to the matter of an accessible central register of those convicted of animal welfare offences or disqualified from keeping animals. Calls for the introduction of a central register raise two distinct issues. Minister, there's, there's two criteria that the PPS uh, uh, put in place when they look at the uh, information on prosecution of farmed animals. One is the, the assessment of the available evidence, and the other is the public interest. Could, he, could, that, could that be explained, what the public interest uh, part of the assessment is for? 
Uh, thank the, the member for his intervention. Um, I would imagine, you know, particularly, um, it, it was seen that we were to have robust um, sentencing in terms of some of that, but the public interest, particularly around recent ca cases, does drive a lot of things that what we do within this chamber, and indeed then um, how that um, uh, is relevant towards legislation. So, you know, I, I do think it is important that we do take into account the public interest, protect, particularly these cases, and seeing what they, what, how best we can serve the people of this area. Um, just to come back to the, the central register and the two distinct issues that that raises. The first relates to, accessible, uh, to access to conviction data for three enforcement bodies, DERA, local councils and the PSNI. The review recognised the need for all enforcement bodies to have access to relevant animal cruelty data. DERA and PSNI presently have access to all relevant conviction data and work is ongoing to provide local council, uh, councils with similar information. Local councils can, however, already access animal cruelty conviction data in cases which they investigated. These arrangements provide enforcement bodies with the information required to effectively monitor compliance with the legislation. Mr. Clark was concerned about this issue. Law enforcement organisations certainly do have access to the information they need. The motion raises the prospect of an accessible register. I understand the motivation for this, and it was actually considered by the review. It is a complex area, and I know that there were calls for either a fully open register or for data to be made available to rehoming organisations. The review listened carefully to the concerns of those stakeholders calling for animal cruelty conviction data to be shared more widely. Stakeholders argued this information would, for example, be helpful in assessing the suitability of those seeking to rehome an animal. I understand the desire to ensure that animals do not fall into the hands of those who have previously been convicted of animal cruelty or disqualified from keeping an animal by the courts. The review team listened to these concerns seriously and considered the matter in some detail. I think it is fair to say, however, that the evidence did not demonstrate a clear need for such arrangements, nor did it point exactly to how this essential register might be formulated or what it might precisely seek to achieve. The review recommended that a central register should not be introduced. Mr. Lund acknowledged the difficulties with the central register, but urged that we should explore if there are any solutions which have not been yet thought about. And certainly, I'm you know, quite willing to listen to members you know, who have expressed an interest in this area. I can explore the detail behind this more fully, and I will discuss it with my executive colleague within DERA. What makes this issue difficult is that information related to convictions is sensitive personal data. In Northern Ireland, this information is managed through a system known as the criminal record sphere. Due to the nature of this information, only organisations involved in the criminal justice system and a small number of other government bodies have access. Even within these uh, organisations, the ability to view conviction data is very tightly controlled. Each organisation has to be able to demonstrate a specific business need and that they have appropriate arrangements in place to ensure this information is handled securely. I know that some contributors to the review felt that as convictions... Yeah, sure. Would the Minister accept that in this day and age it may not be beyond the realms of possibility? that the data can be processed. No one's talking about everyone's criminal records being available to any person uh, sort of selling animals. Uh, surely, it, in this day and age, it can't be beyond the realms that convictions that relate specifically to animal cruelty can be kept on a register that can be accessed by those who would be responsible for the trade in animals. Um, I, I, I appreciate the sentiments of the members and indeed others have expressed very similar views um, and certainly these are the challenges in respect of establishing a central register but you know, you know I am quite content to see if there are ways over the challenges and would, would um, uh, work with the members and others who have expressed a similar view to see if we can overcome those challenges. Um, the review considered findings of the Information Com Commissioner where he has determined that convictions are pronounced in court before a very limited audience. And as time passes from the date of the court, the memory of the, those present diminishes. The Commissioner therefore considers that convictions handed down in court are not public records or information within the public domain. While organisations involved in rehoming animals do have an important role in animal, animal welfare, that role is not and should not be an enforcement role. That is for the statutory bodies. I am also mindful of the potential for conviction data to be misused if it, if it were to be published on an accessible central register. The review also investigated other more limited options for disclosure and found that despite the potential legal difficulties, it might be possible to share conviction data in certain circumstances. However, broader consideration of relevant factors, including how such a system might work in practice, revealed that any method for disclosure would be resource intensive and would result in resources being diverted away from frontline enforcement, which may actually have a detrimental impact on animal welfare. The review found that protecting resources for frontline enfor enforcement provided the best approach to tackling animal cruelty. 
The review team also consulted with enforcement bodies to determine the extent of non-compliance with disqualification orders. It found that there was limited effort evidence to suggest that individuals disqualified from keeping animals have approached rehoming organisations. The review did seek to address concerns regarding animals being rehomed to those who have been disqualified. To gain a deeper understanding of the issue, the review engaged with rehoming organisations to find out more about the rehoming processes already in place. An event was held in February this year for animal rehoming organisations, and the review heard of effective systems and protocols already in place to assess rehoming applications. Mr Weir has kindly attended and spoke at the event, and I'm glad to hear he found it interesting. The event was helpful in providing a forum to share many of the excellent processes in place and to seek to build on those arrangements. The charities go to considerable lengths to avoid rehoming to people who are unsuitable, and I think we will all be happy to pay tribute to their excellent work. This goes well beyond av avoiding matching animals to unsuitable people. They really make exceptional efforts to put the right animals with the right people who will love and care for them. This involves home visits, checkups, and fantastic practical help and advice. I would also like to briefly uh, back to the review sentencing recommendation. In that proposal, we have taken on board the concerns of those seeking to ensure that animals don't fall into the wrong hands, which is why the offence of breaching a disqualification order has been made a hybrid offence. Okay. While I welcome the opportunity for the Assembly to debate animal wel welfare issues today, policy issues around how to best maximise the effect of, of um, agri agriculture welfare provisions are a matter for the Agriculture Minister, but I gave my earlier commitment to work with my uh, executive colleague in seeing how to best uh, move this issue forward. Thank you. I call Trevor Clark to wind, the debate, wind up the debate on the, on the debate on the amendment. Um, thank you very much, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I thank all the members who have taken part today? Um, I was just listening carefully to what the Minister has said, and I have to say, and I, sorry, I should welcome the Minister again today um, for this debate and wish her well in her term of office. However, um, I was just listening carefully to some of her words in relation to the review team, and uh, I have to say, where the review team suggested that actually they would be diverting away from frontline, service, sorry, frontline enforcement if they were to concentrate on some of this, like central registers and stuff like this. But, Mr. Or sorry, Madam Principal Deputy Speaker, what it says to me is that actually there may be less need for enforcement if animals weren't actually placed in their own properties in the first instance. So there may not be the necessity for so many people within the frontline uh, front team. Also, listening to the Minister, and, I mean, and I'm, not, I'm just trying not to hang on your words today, but you were describing in cases where some cases could be reviewed in terms of uh, sentences. Only today, um, the North Antrim MP has actually contacted Emma just whilst he knew this debate was on today. He got a letter back from the PPS on the 16th of June, where he actually had asked for an appeal in relation to a lenient sentence for animal cruelty. But the word back from the PPS was that in only cases from the Crown prosecution can be done and not from the magistrate's court. So for some of us, we don't know necessarily whether our cases are going to the Crown courts or the magistrate's courts. But ultimately, what we do know is that there's animals being abused and mistreated within our communities. And I think it, it typifies today, actually listening to what people have said in this chamber today and actually talking about their own experiences. So it's not for us to get confused whether stuff is in a Crown Court or Magistrates Court. But what's very clear to many of us is, I mean, when, when I did take the intervention, or whenever uh, the good member for, allowed me the intervention in relation to the case in East Belfast, that typifies that the judiciary have got it wrong. And in many of these cases, we cannot appeal these sentences because they don't actually fit within their remit. So for someone, three, three people to actually put uh, cats in a cage and let them pull them to park, for to go in front of the judiciary and to be uh, let out of the court actually in a jovial manner with a suspended sentence, says to me in any right thinking person, I'm sure indeed your, yourself, Minister, would agree that that is too lenient. So it's, it troubles many of us uh, in relation to that. In relation to Mr Little's point about some of the things that the previous minister done, this motion is not trying to take away from anything the previous minister or indeed any ministers from any other departments have done. What we're trying to say is we still haven't got it right. Things are still not right and we want to make it better. Um, Chris Little suggested that maybe he wanted to hear from the DUP what we wanted to do make it right. I, I will need. The member agree that actually there was near unanimity uh, around this chamber on the issues that we were debating. And it is unfortunate that uh, the member for Belfast East and the member for North Down, who is no longer in his place, uh, decided to introduce an element of partisan politics into the discussion, which actually demeaned the issues that were being discussed. 
I agree wholeheartedly, and, that, and that, that's where it's coming to. It seems to me more a case of sour grapes, the fact that the members, uh, members actually missed the, missed the trick and actually set the bar too high for themselves to take the Minister's role. But I have to say, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that Claire Sugden stood up to the mark. I'm, Claire, I'm thankful that Claire's here today, and I'm thankful she's actually taking her brief seriously and taking the issue seriously, as is all the members within this chamber. But it's not for us to suggest to you, Minister, necessarily how to do your job and how to actually come about it. The motion is merely making a suggestion in terms of a central register. If I can actually give you one example of, I mean, so others talked about family, family pets. I have a family pet. My family pet was advertised on the internet, but it was advertised by a local council. I contacted the council for that dog. The, counselor to, the council officials told me they couldn't release the dog until a certain date the following week. And the reason they couldn't do that was because they had to keep it so many days before they could release it. But the interesting fact in that particular case was the wardens knew where the dog came from, that the wardens knew the family, because the wardens had visited that home on so many occasions. And what actually happened as a regular practice was, I'm told, was the, dog was op the, the door of the property was opened in the morning and the dog was pushed out onto the street. So they weren't responsible dog owners but they had no power to do anything with the dog or with the owners in relation to that dog. So thankfully when the time came, they were not caring about that particular dog. They didn't come to collect it from the pound on this occasion and thankfully it came into our care where we have given it a good caring home. But if there was a central register where people had, I mean that particular family could in the following day have went to another charity and taken a dog regardless of how they're going to care for that. So there's no concern about how people actually acquire these pets. They just can go in and get them just the way you can get into Tesco's and buy your litre of milk. You can go to a home and charity and get a dog, a cat or any other animal. For me, listening to or reading up even in releasing this information pack today and looking at some of the statements that we've had over the last couple of years in the newspapers and some of those harrowing cases where people have abused animals, there's nothing to say those three gentlemen in East Belfast go to a neighbouring constituency and purchase a dog or a cat or any other animal because they're not on a central register. Yes, their neighbours may know that that case has been brought against them, but some people within that local area, sorry, some people where actually they're purchasing an animal won't know. And I think the only way that we can overcome this problem for people like that and others I mean, we had the case that has been referred to by three members, I think, today about Cody in Lisburn, where the dog was set on fire. There's nothing to prevent any of those people going in to any establishment to get a dog. I have to say, reference has been made also today in terms of social media, and I think some sites on social media have started to get it right in, in relation to their responsibility and suggesting to people that their adverts will be taken down now, where particularly they're offering dogs to free to good homes. Many of us know, and I think it was said in someone's, I think it was actually Michaela had said today in relation to, these are being used for baiting. Now, that is the last thing that anyone in this chamber wants to see. But the sooner we get to a position where we can actually ban online sales, we can keep a register of those who have been actually convicted and found guilty to prevent them from acquiring animals. We're not serious if we just continually debate this. I mean, members have said this has been debated. Yes, it has been debated, and yes, it will be debated again. And I think we will continue to debate it until we get it right. We haven't got it right, and that's why that, uh, Emma and myself asked for this to be tabled today. And I, I'm thankful for all those who have taken part in this debate today. I mean, I'll just go through briefly some of the things that have been said. And I mean, this is, I mean, in Emma's words today, was she talked about a fight against cruelty. This is a fight about, against cruelty, and most members wants to join in that fight against cruelty, and I think that's very important. And she talked about the, the, uh, how, it, how it makes her angry. Indeed, it makes me angry as well. Whenever you see some sites, actually, whether it be on YouTube or others, where people still advertise dog fighting, and you can actually go on and see it in this day and age, that makes me angry and makes me disappointed that we haven't got a robust system to bring this to an end and to prevent these people from keeping animals. Doug Beatty talked about, I mean, he talked when he was in the chamber about we have progressed it and it has been debated. And we know it's been debated, but we, w we don't want to continue to debate this. We want a system where it's robust. And one of the ways that we see, and that's why we're coming forward with the suggestion today, is a central register. It was interesting to note, even, Minister, whenever you did say um, that they talked to the, the review talked about a clear need, it wasn't they can't do it, it was a case they didn't want to do it. That's why I view it. 
There is no reason why we cannot do this. It was a case of there was no willingness to do it. And I'm not saying for one second that that was in your part, but certainly those, and that's my view of how that review has come out. There was no willingness. And I think we need to change the attitude of some of these individuals within departments. Nicola Mullen uh, also talked about stricter and harsher sentencing, something none of us is going to disagree with. I mean, because we do see of suspended sentences where people abuse and destroy animals. To get off with a lenient sentence as a suspended sentence, that's absolutely ridiculous in this day and age. They should, get, they should be behind bars and prevent it from keeping animals for life. And again, the only way to do that, Minister, is a central register. Trevor Lunn um, also talked about the, the ban, and I think he actually had a, a valid point, um, where households, the ban can be against an individual in the house. So I have uh, three children in my house, my wife and myself, and if one of my children were banned from keeping animals, there's nothing to prevent the rest of us actually from keeping animals in the same house. I think that's wrong, Minister, because I think the same people and the same mindset are in contact with those animals, and that's where we're moving. I think those are all suggestions that we're looking to try and get tougher on animal abuse within Northern Ireland. Peter Weir, um, he also acknowledged the work that's been done again. The general themes coming across here today, more needs to be done to improve this. Um, Harold, Harold McKee, whenever he spoke, he talked about how people were appalled at the treatment of animals. That's, that's apparent here today. It's apparent by the number of people who wanted to contribute in this debate today. And I thank the, the member for his contribution in relation to that. I will indeed. Mr. Uh, sorry, Madam Principal Deputy Speaker, I support this motion and I am appealing to the Minister to do more now that she's in the role and take up, maybe fill the gaps where the previous Minister didn't get it right and take us much further that we can have a central register, we can prevent people from abusing animals in our society today. The question is that the amendment standing on the Marshall list be made. All those in favour say aye. Aye. So the ayes have it. The the question is that the motion, as, sorry, one of the and the question is all those uh, contrary say no. The ayes have it. They definitely have it this time. The question is that the motion as amended be agreed. All those in favour say aye. aye. All those contrary, no. The ayes have it. And just to let the House know, I have three hens and two cats. And unfortunately, I did have four hens, but the fox got one of the hens. And I'm delighted that this debate was held here today because we have to do everything we can to protect animals. We now. Um